Good evening and welcome to today's broadcast of UWF Basketball at GoArgos.com. Today your Argonauts will be taking on Mississippi College, the Choctaws of Mississippi College, uh, in Pensacola, Florida at the UWF Fieldhouse. Well, let me... 
This is Daniel Drost, and thanks for tuning in here at GoArgos.com. About 32 seconds left to go to begin uh, the lineups. Argonauts come in today at 2-0 after a successful tip-off tournament, the McDonald Fleming Moorhead tip-off tournament this weekend. Uh, we'll be doing the starting lineups. I believe we're going to be doing the national anthem shortly, and then we'll go into some some stats. Uh, Mississippi College. Uh, they're from Clinton, Mississippi, Division Three school. Played in the American Southwest Conference. UWF, of course, Gulf South Conference, Division Two. Uh, actually, right now, they have the best record in the Gulf South Conference, even though it's not. Conference standings. Several other teams in the Gulf South Conference at 1 0. Alabama Huntsville, number three ranked in the nation, and Christian Brothers at number 16, the only two teams that are ranked in the top 20. Okay, we're going to take a pa short pause for the national anthem. All right, fans, we're going to go through the lineups real quick. We'll be starting the game shortly for the Choctaws of Mississippi College. This is their first game of the season. They'll be starting number one, Brandon Blake. He's a junior, 6'3", guard. Number two, Termont Ragland, a six-foot junior guard. Uh, they'll also start Jarvis Moore, 5'7", senior guard. Another guard on the list, Laquavius Cotton. He's a 6'6", junior. Big guard, Adam Smith, 6'5 forward. He's a senior. Only returning player that I've seen from their stats is uh, Brandon Blake, uh, of, of course, of, of any mention. He averaged 13.4 points per game last year. They also have Adam Smith, who only started two games last year. He was a 7.1 points per game scorer. So most of their players, three, three of their other starters were not even players last year, so it's hard to, hard to know what they're going to bring to the floor. For the Argonauts, nothing out of the ordinary. Same starting lineup the Argonauts have gone with for the first two games. They'll start Tracy Williams, six-foot senior guard. They'll start Nate Johnson, who's been playing forward at the 6'3 uh, height junior. They'll start at the guards, Jason Latch and Sean Boss, the freshman and the sophomore duo. And then, of course, they'll put Peter Canole, senior forward, 6'7 forward. Known to step out and shoot the three now and then. Good range. He'll start at the other forward opposite of Nate Johnson. Tracy Williams most likely will play the point guard. Got a couple of natural point guards out there in Sean Voss and Tracy Williams. Sometimes it doesn't uh, even look like you can tell the difference between them as far as where they play or who brings the ball up. But normally, uh, from what I've seen the first couple of games, it's been Tracy Williams. All right. Set to begin. Peter Canole will be performing jump ball duties. They'll be going from the right to the left. The Choctaws will be in yellow. They'll be going from the left to right. 
And here we go. Tip goes to the Choctaws. It'll be brought down by Jarvis Moore. He'll be guarded by Sean Voss. Argonauts will pick up in a man-to-man. Latch with a quick steal. He goes to Voss and back to Canole, who airballs a layup. Great opportunity to score right here at the beginning. In transition, the Choctaws bring it down. I believe that was uh, Adam Smith for an easy two in transition. Choctaws are going to mix. Uh, looks like they're going to set up in a man-to-man -man defense. Tracy, excuse me, that's Latch on the baseline from about eight feet. He'll knock it down. Two to two now, just over 19 to play. First half. Boss pressures the ball. He'll double down. They'll go back to Moore. Moore drives in. Nothing there, but it's put up by Adam Smith again. Adam Smith with two quick baskets. Going to have to do something on the inside to stop the Choctaws game. Adam Smith, 6'5", senior, not uh, seeing much defensive pressure from the inside. Latch from the corner for three. No good. It's short. Johnson gets the rebound. Johnson averaging a double-double on the year. 11.1 rebounds per game. Excuse me, 11.5 rebounds per game in the first two. Ball swings it to Latch. Latch for three again. No good. In and out. Canole had the rebound in his hand. It's tipped around a few times. Johnson comes up with again. That's two quick off there. There's Latch for three. No good again. Latch has missed three three-pointers in a row. Canole had the rebound and lost it. Williams will come up with it. And they'll set up the offense. Voss on the top. He'll go to Latch on the far side. Swung back into to Latch. It's no good. Looks like they're going to have a reset of the shot clock, but I think they're going to reset it back to the where it was because there really wasn't an official change of possession. Choctaw's had it, and he came down on the baseline, uh, but so there was never an actual possession. Referees conferring with Matt Zini over there. The 32nd shot, th excuse me, 35-second shot clock. All right. Quick pass into Canole. It's no good. Voss goes up, battles for the rebound. It's going to be a jump ball. Possession's going to go to the Argonauts. I believe that'll give Sean Voss a rebound. Nice hustle by Sean Voss. There's a quick inside play again to Canole. Canole can't make it. Latch comes down with the rebound after it's tipped a few times. They'll set it up. Offense is set from the top of the key. Swung over to Voss on the other side. Voss drives, penetrates, tipped away by the Choctaws. With 22 seconds left on the shot clock, Argonauts will have it. Williams will throw it in down low. Canole gets it on the outside. He comes back in to Johnson. Little turnaround jump shot. It's no good. Boy, the Argonauts are having a tough, tough time putting the ball in the hole. It's now 4-2 in favor of the Choctaws. Argonauts have had, ah, must, what, must seem like 10, 10 chances at the goal. Pretty good looks. Choctaws are going to drive in. They'll put it uh, up and in for two and are going to be fouled by it's Jason Latch. That's going to be his first personal. First team foul for the Argonauts. It's going to put Laquavius Cotton, 6'6", six, six junior. That was a nice drive into the basket. Not sure the Choctaws have missed yet. By my count, they're either three or three, three for three or four for four from the field while Argonauts are having a real problem. Ball almost done away, saved by Latch, but he can't get it back in, so that's going to go as a turnover by the, the Argonauts. Tough couple of minutes to start the game. Adam Smith pulls up from 15. It's no good. Voss comes down with the rebound. He'll bring it down quickly, but pull it back out wisely to set up the offense. It goes back over to Latch for three, and that one's good. So it cuts into the Choctaw lead. Choctaw still ahead 7-5 at the 16-50 mark in the first half. Argonauts still in a man-to-man -man defense from the top of the key. Choctaws for three, no good. Rebound by Johnson again. Kind of a lazy pass. Looking up for Tracy Williams. It's tipped out of bounds, but the Argonauts will retain possession. Johnson will throw it into Williams. 
He goes all the way down to Latch in the corner. They'll set it up. Boss on the far side. Cutting through is Williams. He's not there. Latch will bring it around. Normal offensive set for the Argonauts against that man. Williams for three. It's good. That's going to give the Argonauts a one-point lead at 8-7 with 16-10 to play in the first half. Quick transition, secondary. That's going to go a nice little drive by Termont Ragland. He scores, puts the Choctaws back up on top. Latch in the corner for three. It's no good. Tipped around, good, good hustle by the Argonauts. Choctaws come away with it. Good look up by the Choctaws. He's fouled by Voss. That's going to put... Laquavius Cotton on the line to shoot two. Boy, it just doesn't seem like the Argonauts can get back in time to stop the transition pace by the Choctaws. That's going to be a media timeout. Looks like before the media timeout, they're going to bring in, Argonauts are going to bring in three or four players. So we should be, see a different, uh, should be seeing a different lineup after the timeout. So, so far, 9-8 in favor of the Choctaws. Surprisingly, the Choctaws come out pushing the ball up the floor, shooting pretty well from the floor. Argonauts, not for the lack of many chances, they've, uh, they had just haven't been able to get it, the ball in the basket. Both teams playing a man-to-man -man defense. Uh, I think possibly uh, trying to think about what Coach Stinnett might go over in the huddle, haven't seen much inside-outside play from the Argonauts here. Maybe looking more for Johnson inside, maybe posting up Canole. Not sure who they haven't coming in. I think it's Ellis Young. Ellis Young averaging 15.5 points per game off the bench and 6.5 rebounds. 22 minutes a game for Ellis Young. It is going to be Ellis Young in the game. We'll also see Savon Bracey. For the second time, he played in their first game, but only played for about one minute, one or two minutes, that is. They'll also have Lawrence Certain in there. And Lindward, excuse me, Lindward Griffin. So a drastic change in lineup for the Argonauts, trying to get something going. Tracy Williams will stay in and run point guard. So a tall, tall lineup for the Argonauts. Something really we haven't seen yet so far. Have not seen this lineup come in yet. First shot is good by Cotton of the Choctaws. Pushes the lead to 10-8. Second one is good, so Choctaws now up by three with 15.45 to go in the first half. Choctaws are going to bring the 2-3 defense. Williams will have it up top. He's got Ellis Young on the right side. They go inside. They go inside to Savon Bracey, and it's good. Something we haven't seen yet tonight, some inside play. We'll have to watch for that as we go along, see if we can push the Choctaws out of that 2-3 defense. Choctaws have it, little penetration, little in and out play, backed out to the perimeter. Penetration again, back out to the perimeter. Back out uh, inside to Adam Smith. He drives, pulls it up over certain. It's no good. Rebound by... Bracy, Savon Bracy comes in. Quick, quick uh, rebound and two points. Tracy Williams pulls up in transition. Wouldn't even hardly call that transition. Pulls up from about 26, 27 feet. Sloppy pass by the Choctaws. Looks like uh, UWF bailed them out of that one. They'll retain possession here on the right sideline. Discussion by Coach Stinnett, trying to see what exactly what happened there. It was a little funky play. Blake has it on the far side. He'll go to, excuse me, Laura has it on the far side. He'll go to Blake in the corner. Raglan looks for the three. It's no good with a big Griffin hand in his face. Penetration to the baseline. It's good. Nice drive baseline. Nobody, nobody there to help. Brand, that was Brandon Blake from the Choctaws. Choctaw is going to come in with five new players at the next stoppage of play. Williams penetrates. He gets around his defender, pulls up from 15. No good. 
Lindward Griffin on the rebound attempt. It goes over his head. Choctaws will bring it back. Set up offense. Some more in and out play. Three-point shot by Laquavius Cotton is good. So Choctaws have pushed it to a six-point lead now, 16-10 to 10 with 13.52 to play. Griffin has it on the left side. Looks like we'll have Ellis Young and Griffin on the perimeter playing with Williams. Turnover, look inside for, I think it was certain, it's no good. I like this game plan by the Choctaws so far. They are really pushing the ball in the Argonauts and, and coming up with some uh, easy shots. Well, I don't know about easy, but they're coming up with some pretty good shots and uh, really frustrating the Argonauts. Three fouls already compared to zero by the Argonauts. Inbounds play. Again, new fresh five for the Choctaws. We'll see how this pans for them. They did pretty good with the first five. Goes inside to Victor McLean. It's no good. Rebound by Williams. Bounces back out. Williams will kind of hold it up. He'll go to Ellis Young. Pull up from 15. It's good. Argonauts cutting into the Choctaw lead. Now 16 to 12 in favor of the Choctaws with just over 13 to play in the first half. Still looking for that inside-outside game. That's another another reason I really like this, this Choctaw offensive set. This, this team's looking pretty good. There's a little fadeaway jumper from Parker Moore. Probably the most ill-advised shot that we've seen so far, but it goes in a little fadeaway action from Moore. 18-12 now in favor of the Choctaws. Argonauts haven't found themselves behind very often in the first game. Lawrence Certain up for two. It's good. Got to like uh, Argonauts going inside. Got a good presence in there from Certain and Bracey, it looks like. That's going to be McLenn that's going to back Certain down. He goes back out for three. No good by the Choctaws. Certain will come down with the rebound. Williams will bring it up. Looking inside, he's going to go to Young on the far side. Looking for certain inside, it's not there. Again, looks a little confusing in there for the Argonauts. Bracey has it at the tee. He'll go cross court to Williams. Back around to Griffin. He goes inside to Bracey. Inside, outside play. Back to Griffin. Seven seconds on the shot clock now. Williams pulls up from 23. It's no good. McLinn comes away with the rebound. Choctaws have it. Still 18-14 in favor of Choctaws. 11.30 to go in the first half. UWF still in a man-to-man -man defense. Playing them tough. Pull up from about 18 for Daryl Duncan. It's no good. Certain comes away with the rebound again. Certain doing a good job down there with those missed Choctaw shots. Williams drives in on the transition. Puts it up and good, but foul occurs before the shot. Argos will take it on the baseline. And at 11.17, that means media timeout. Media timeout. Fans, next time you're browsing the web, be sure to check out the official online store of the Argonauts at argofanshop.com. Visit argofanshop.com or click the link at argos.com to browse a selection of apparel, bags, accessories, and much more, all featuring the Argonauts logos at argofanshop.com. Dot com. All right. We'll get the stats for you. Stats over the first eight plus minutes for West Florida, shooting six for 18 from the floor. That thanks to a couple of baskets here lately. Six for eight. Got a majority of the scoring coming from Jason Latch. He did have a three. He had he has five points on the day. The rest of the scoring pretty even. Got Tracy Williams with three points off of one three-pointer. He's one for three from the three-point arc. 0 for one outside uh, inside the three-point arc. Pretty even scoring 
coming inside by Lawrence Certain, Savon Bracey, and Ellis Young. All right, we're back in action. Voss is in now. Voss attempts to throw it in. It gets away from him. Choctaws have it. Swatted away by Ellis Young. It's no good. Choctaws rebound it. Put it up. It's no good. And I believe that was Bracey that came away with that rebound. Voss will bring it up. He's giving Williams a breather. Same lineup now as before except for Voss in. Certain goes inside. A good look outside. That ball's tipped away. Another turnover by the Argonauts. Little drive by Moore. It's no good. Swatted away. Rebounded by the Argonauts. Haven't seen much offensive scoring from either team in the last three or four minutes of the game. Pressure man-to-man -man by the Choctaws. Certain has it inside. He goes cross court outside to Voss. Drives in and it's good. Great take. Like that look. Something that we haven't seen very much of. Driving it inside. Three-pointer by the Choctaws. It's no good. Hits the, hits the wire above the basket. And it's going to go to UWF. Lawrence Johnson is going to come in and give Savon Bracey a break. So with Ellis Young and Savon Bracey, looks like they're going to line up at the four and five position. It's going to leave Johnson playing a wing spot. And Griffin on the other side. Swung around a few times. It's a look, great look down low to Young. Led him really well on the baseline side. Gave Young an easy look at a bucket. And that closes it. Oh, didn't close it. It ties the score at 18. We are under 10 minutes into this game. It's a knotted score at 18. Pressure defense by UWF. Parker Moore from the Choctaws really trying to push it down toward the basket. Young reaches in, tips it away. Probably could have been a foul, but refs will make it a no call. Here come the Choctaws starting five back in. Something you don't usually see very often in college basketball, full lineup changes like this. Kind of a strange look. We'll take it though because the second lineup for the Choctaws didn't seem to fare as well. Hey, there's a drive by the Choctaws and Argos will draw a foul. Williams back in now, steps in front of, I believe that was Javon Moore, excuse me, Jarvis Moore. That'll give Jarvis Moore his first foul. Second for the team. Team fouls now stand at three for the Argonauts, two for the Choctaws. Been a while since UWF had a foul. Good lineup here for the Argonauts. Certain goes down low to Young. There's nothing there. Young holds his composure, turns around, waits for, for something to spread out in the middle, and then backs his defender in and scores a fairly easy bucket. Smart play by Ellis Young. Got to like that. I like this inside. First five minutes, we didn't see much inside play. It seemed to be a lot of three-pointers, some penetration cross-court passes, but we've really worked the inside game really well. Block to block, tees, looking for cutters, passing back around the, on the outside. Much less focus on the perimeter. You chose by the score. A great move by Jarvis Moore. Spin move on Sean Voss. Sean Voss is not happy. Sean Voss, one of the quicker players on the team. Jarvis Moore, no slouch to quickness himself. Swung around to Williams, they'll look inside. Still looking inside for Certain and Moore. Certain gets it, little dish downstairs to, to Brace, uh, excuse me, Young. But it's tipped away. I think the Choctaws had that one figured out. We've used it a few times, it may have gotten old. Certain may want to, when they, when they throw the ball in that offensive set to that tee, Certain may want to look to fake that pass now that the Choctaws had that figured out because it looked like it was pretty open down there. He, he may have gotten an easy bucket crossing him up and going weak side block on that. More on the opposite side. Pull up from Brandon Blake. Tough, tough shot. It again hits the wire. That's going to be a team rebound for the Argonauts. At 7.56, that, of course, means a media timeout. Media timeout. 
We would like to thank Florida Blue for being the official health care partner of UWF Athletics. Visit the Florida Blue Center located on the corner of Airport Boulevard and 9th Avenue in Pensacola. Visit floridablue.com. That's floridablue.com. Current stats right now, still pretty even scoring barrage from the Argonauts. Looks like they have nine players that have scored. Correction, looking at the rebounds here. Seven, I believe. It's a pretty good scoring barrage. We have played a lot of players. I believe, by my count, we've, we've had 10 different players in the game. Score now 20 to 20 with 7.56 to go in the first half. Line up for the Argonauts, Sean Voss, Tracy Williams, Nate Johnson. Canole is back in, so there'll be Canole and Ellis Young on the post. I think they've got Peter Canole playing a little more post this year than he usually has. He's, uh, he's been listed as a forward. Uh, he, he's got some uh, he's got some guard characteristics. He's a big guy, but he sure does play the per perimeter pretty well. He's got a beautiful shot. I think they look to maybe for some matchup issues on the offensive side with a, a big guy maybe matching up with Canole and maybe driving in. Argonaut still with the ball after a chalk tall turnover in transition. Double dribble. Voss had a turnover for the Argonauts in the meantime as well. Ellis Young from 17, 18 feet. It's no good. Argonauts having a lot of trouble with that mid to long range jump shot this game. All their scoring seems to be coming, or at least at a higher field goal percentage, coming from inside 15 and somewhere near the post. Substitution for Choctaws. Adam Smith, who was so effective those first couple of minutes, they haven't gone to him at all, comes back out. A little alley-oop pass from Young Williams. Great pass. Young just couldn't handle it. Leads to a transition bucket. Quick, easy transition bucket. Argonaut's going to have to do something about those transition basket issues. Like to see the stats on that one. Particularly effective with the Choctaws in the first five minutes. This lineup, there's a Canole. Rolling around to the tee and pulls up. Nice shot from Canole. Back even at 22 with seven minutes to go in the first half. Choctaw's with. Moore guarded by Voss. Far side, Johnson has Ragland. Swung back around, four players on the perimeter. Looking at one Choctaw on the inside. It's McLinn. They go to McLinn. Attempts to back Young back in. Well, Young won't have it. Tipped ball, nice penetration by Raglan. It's no good. Good looking shot by the Choctaws. They couldn't get it to fall, it was Young. Pull up by Canole, it's no good. Nice little rebound and put back by Young. Young, high school high jumper. Puts it up and in. Gives the Argo their first lead, but again, Choctaws with a quick bucket from about 12 feet. That was Brandon Blake. 6.08 now to go, still knotted, now at 24. Voss on the far side, goes to Williams, cutting through. Some confusion in the center area. Back to their normal offensive set. Williams can't get by more. Back inside to Johnson, Johnson at 6.3, pretty effective on the post. Voss for three, it's hit away, no good. Voss having a tough time on the perimeter tonight, a couple turnovers. Block shot. Only success Voss has seen so far has been penetrating to the basket, which I think he does really well. Like to see some more of that. A good fake shot right there and go to the basket. One second on the shot clock. Canole pulls up. He misses. Nobody there for the rebound, but the Choctaws throw it right back to Canole. Again, it was that Choctaw game plan of being quick out of the basket. Williams misses an easy two. Drives the lane, Choctaw has just completely forgot about Williams. Puts it out with an easy uh, little layup and it bounces off the back of the rim and comes back out. Fortunately, Argos regained possession. Sneaky little pass into Johnson. 
He almost gets it tipped away by Choctaws. I, I'm not really sure I like that pass either. It, it was a, a little bit of a telegraph. Williams has it inside on the post. He drives looking for a matchup issue. Williams gets it again, gets the rebound. He passes it to Young, puts it up and good. Give Williams the assist on that one. Good look inside to Young. Williams had at least two reba offensive rebounds there. Three-pointer for the Choctaws. It's no good. Young with the rebound again. Lazy pass to Williams. Ball is tipped around. Choctaws come away with it. Wide open dunk for McLinn. Choctaws take a 30. 4.53 left to go. It's a little bit of a sloppy play. We haven't seen much sloppy play from the Argonauts here lately. Lately, I mean, the first two games. 26-26 now. 4.53 to go. Probably have a media timeout coming here shortly after the 30. Media timeouts come at 16, 12, 8, and 4. First stoppage of play after those time spots. We're about ready to go again. 30-second timeouts go really quick. As you watch or listen to today's game, remember that live stats are available in the same Game Central portal, portal in which you're following this game. Click on the live events and find today's game, then click on live stats. Of course, I'm not watching the video feed. It's live, but I also have the game stats pulled up as well. So make sure you pull that up for a little more insight into the game. I'm trying to bring you as much as I can. But, of course, it's only limited. You can follow it live stats. Great look inside. Like that, they went to the T with Canole. And then a dump inside to, I believe that was Young, down low. Steal by Canole, great job fronting the post player by Canole. We don't see that enough, I don't think. Voss inside on the take, goes to Canole, it's dished back out. And back inside, mishandled by Johnson, he'll come away with it, but he can't hang on to it. A little transition bucket. I don't know if you say little, it was a nice slam by Laquavius Cotton. Back and forth game, now knotted at 28 again, just under four minutes to play. Williams drives in, can't keep his hands on it. Refs will say that's tipped away. Could have probably gone either way. 3.55, media timeout. UWF Athletics would like to thank Tom Thumb for being the official sponsor of the Argo Armada Student Rewards Program and Argy's Kids Club. Tom Thumb, ingredients for life. Should be getting some stats coming over from our stat crew. Little act game action here on the floor during the media timeouts. If you can't make it to the game I would uh, tonight, I would encourage you to come in the future. Lots of great festivities, chances to, to be rewarded for being here and being adept basketball skilled. Right now it's a free throw shooting contest. Well, I see him going in from both sides. Argo's now shooting 13 for 32, which is great because percentage back up to 41% on the game for the field. Still pretty dismal from the three point line. Two for 10, 20%. Most of that came in the first five or six minutes though. We haven't seen Jason Latch again. He was one for five for the three point line. It'd be interesting to know uh, why Jason Latch hasn't come back in other than, than having trouble from with his range. He is a really quick, oh, there he is right there. <laughs> Coming back in from the media timeout. And I believe Latch bounce passes to Williams and throws the ball away. That may have been why we hadn't seen him. A lot of turnovers for the Argonauts. That would have been our 10th turnover, which is very high for a half, still with 3.44 to play. Choctaws with only five on the game, so we've doubled the number of turnovers that Choctaws have had. Choctaws playing a quick pace game. Normally you'd see a team playing a quick pace game have a lot more turnovers, but doing pretty well with the ball, shooting 
8% from the field. That's going to lower it a little bit. Oh, never mind. Goes up a little bit. Missed three-point shot. Tip in by the Choctaws. Choctaws now ahead 30 to 28 with 3 10 to go in the first half. Johnson on the far side looking at cutters. Johnson and Young, nothing there. Goes to Canole on the block. He looks around the perimeter. Wants to uh, back in his defender. It's not there. Back in and out to Canole. Telegraphs his pass. Tries to throw it between two Choctaw defenders. Either one of them could have had to steal. One comes away. That ball was actually blocked and goes in by Young. Four-point lead now for the Choctaws. Still a lot of trouble for the Argonauts getting back on transition defense. Just seems to me that we should be forcing more steals against a team that that is uh, doesn't have a lot of experience, specifically at the D2 level. Coming out of the D3 American Southwest Conference. Latch on the cut. They go inside. It's tipped away. Fortunately, back to Johnson. Nifty little pass to Canole on the weak side block. He pulls up for an easy two. Nice to get an easy two every now and then. It hasn't happened very often. Argo's picking up again in the tight man-to-man -man defense. On the far side, Blake from three-point line, guarded by Canole. One guy inside. It's Victor McLean for the Choctaws. Again, a penetration. Boy, the Choctaws are spreading it out. I'm not even sure now they're running any offense. They're just kind of cutting in and then just either looking for the penetration bucket or looking for a dish back out or maybe a quick move to the post play. Uh, before it looked like it was set, but now it just looks like they're relying on their athletic ability to open up shots. Could have been a little mismatch. Canole not known for his defensive ability. Another turnover by the by the Argonauts. We're gonna get Johnson on the travel. Argo's gonna pull up, excuse me, jump into a full well as a full court. Looking like they put a little pressure on the inbounds play, but I'm not sure. Maybe some of them forgot about it or just got a late start, but Choctaws get it in pretty easy. Post player now, Parker Moore, 6'5 player down low. He pulls up. They get it to him. Canole trying to front him. Hard target with 6'7. Canole in there fronting the post player. They get it to the 6'5. Parker Moore, and he puts up an air ball little hook shot from about six feet on the block. Lindward Griffin back in with 118 to play. Argo's still down by four, 34 30, with 115 to go. It'll be Williams with Latch and Canole now playing the wing on the left side. Young on the drive from Latch. It's no good, but he gets fouled on the arm. Well, something new happening 19 minutes in the game. Argos will be shooting a free throw. Ellis Young hits the first one. On the year, Ellis Young shooting 58%, 7 for 12. But it's improving. Now it goes down. This is the second one. 34-31 now, 102 left to go. Pressure defense by Lindward Griffin against Parker Moore. Perimeter play, Latch trying to get through a screen is going to foul a Choctaw player. We're nowhere near the bonus situation. So the Choctaws will have a fresh 35 and take it out on the sideline. It's like the Argos are getting with it on defense a little more than normal. My goodness, a very strange looking 16, 17 foot fadeaway out of bounds from Parker Moore. Coach is clapping, so he shot that a few times tonight. Must be his thing. It hadn't gone in, though. Actually, the first one went in. Had a little fadeaway, but that was a fadeaway to the side going out of bounds. It's like a horse shot. 
Williams on the far side. Williams tries to penetrate. Cano gets it at the top of the key. Looks under for Griffin. Nice little move by Griffin. He scores two. Brings it back within one with 20 seconds to go. Shot clock is off. Choctaw coach will call for the last second shot. Looks like Choctaw is going to go in with a halftime lead, barring a steal and a score by the Argonauts. Five seconds to go. Some confusion. Three seconds. They're at about 35 feet. Pull up. A throw from the Choctaws. Can't get a good shot off. Boy, it just seemed like in the last minute or two, the Argo defense switched into a higher gear. Not sure why that happened this late in the half, but could have been a lineup situation. I think Argos, that's one thing that we don't lack. A lot of speed in our in our uh, from our perimeter players. So we have 34-33. Looking at 15 minute halftime. We're gonna let it go for halftime. We'll come back with about three or four minutes left, go through some halftime stats. So we will see you in about 10 minutes. And now for this week in Argo Athletics. The number two ranked University of West Florida women's soccer team advanced to the third round of the NCAA Division II Women's Soccer Championships after they defeated North Alabama 4-2 in a second round matchup. This is the third time this season UWF has beaten North Alabama. After falling behind a goal early in the first half, junior Chelsea Palmer scored to bring the game even at one goal apiece. Three minutes later, senior Monica Malabasi headed in the second goal of the match to take the 2-1 lead. Later in the first half, junior Shelby Bush scored her 14th goal of the season in the 30th minute. Well, we've been, we've been down on them one goal before, and so we knew what we had to do. We just keep composure, and then we just go in, and we get them back, and we just keep driving for goals. And we are used to playing them, so we knew their weaknesses, and they knew ours, so it wasn't anything new. So it was just good to beat them for three times in a row. There's no excuses. The UWF men's basketball team kicked off the new season with back-to-back -back wins at the McDonald Fleming Moorhead Tip-Off Classic in Pensacola, Florida. UWF defeated Palm Beach Atlantic on Friday as senior point guard Tracy Williams led UWF with 26 points and 4 steals. Junior Nate Johnson tallied 20 points in the win. We're definitely happy to get our first game out of the way, get a win here for our fans. We appreciate the fan support, but we definitely got to tighten up on, the, up, up on a few things because 91 points is way too much, so we'll, we're ready for Sunday's game. Johnson came up big again for the Argonauts in the 66-46 win over Georgia College on Sunday, as the junior tallied 17 points and pulled down 13 rebounds. The Lincolnshire, Illinois native was rewarded for his efforts by being named Gulf South Conference Player of the Week for the first time in his career. The number 17 ranked University of West Florida volleyball team earned three consecutive wins to wrap up the 2012 regular season. Sophomore Autumn Dine collected 41 kills over the weekend and leads the Argonauts on the year in total kills. Dine tallied a weekend high 19 kills in a 3-1 win over Montevallo on Saturday. The UWF women's basketball team opened up the regular season this weekend under first-year head coach Stephanie Lawrence Yelton. UWF fell to Southern Indiana on Friday 70-53. Junior Emily Erland recorded a double-double with 11 points and 10 rebounds in the loss. Saturday, the Argonauts fell to Barry in a hard-fought match 58-55. Senior Jamie Druding tallied 10 points and 7 rebounds. Make sure to come out and support your number two ranked University of West Florida women's soccer team this weekend as they continue in the hunt of a national championship. UWF will also be hosting the Gulf South Conference Volleyball Tournament this weekend. UWF earned a bye in the first round and will play their first match on Saturday. Make sure to keep up with the Argonauts on GoArgos.com and our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. That wraps up this week's edition of the Argonaut Weekly Report. Well, we've got uh, seven or eight new faces, and we're excited about that. We think we've got some talent on the ball club. We just got to mold that talent together. And uh, losing the five starters that we did last year uh, gives a, all these new young men an opportunity to come in and start, make things happen. 
Uh, we're excited about it. I think uh, time will tell out of these seven or eight who are going to make that starting lineup and is going to get the minutes. I think if everything goes into play like we expect it to, we're excited about what's going ahead. Well, some of the newcomers coming in, I think uh, we got a, a guard, uh, Tracy Williams, be a senior. Uh, gives us that stability and, and, and uh, maturity up front. Um, Ellis Young is a junior college kid from Bavar Junior College. It's coming in about 6'4", talented. Jason Latch, a kid, kid from Birmingham, a freshman, who I think is going to be very, very good for us. Uh, got a lot of potential and should help us out even as a freshman. Well, the four so players we've got coming back off last year's ball club will be very, very instrumental in what we've got to do and how we got to get there as fast as we get there because they understand what we're trying to do. They understand last year's success, uh, 19 and 11, the second most wins in school history. So they understand it, uh, and they're and it's a, it, and they also help us teach the young guys what to do. So yeah, we're going to depend on them a lot, and uh, they've obviously got the advantage because they know what we're trying to accomplish because of last year. Well, Coach Morgan and Coach Evans do a fantastic job. Um, since they've come here, we've seen a huge difference in the, the uh, physicalness and the size of our players, just being able to take the beatings. That, they go through in conference and in, in the offseason. Um, our team this year, we have a bunch of guys that they've gone through the junior college system. They're coming in out of high school. They haven't really been involved in a whole lot of weight training. So Coach Morgan does a fantastic job getting these guys ready. Coach Evans uh, has them excited every day, yelling in the locker room. I wish they would yell that much on the court, but uh, they, they're really getting after it. And you can see the guys getting stronger and, and uh, being able to, to be more physical on the basketball court. Well, we have uh, this year, every year we try to take a nice trip. A couple of years ago, we went out to Alaska. This year, we're going to Las Vegas and playing that tournament. Um, we always play every year Montebello, who's second in the nation. And uh, uh, so we look forward to playing those folks. This year, for the first time, we're playing some different people that we never played since I've been here, Tuskegee and a few others. So. There's a few different people on the schedule than we've ever played in the past, so we're looking forward to that also. But the conference, the conference speaks for itself. People like Huntsville, Christian Brothers, North Isle, West Georgia, uh, Valdosta. I mean, it's uh, West Isle is going to be good. So uh, and we're going to have to bring our A game. It's going to be, it's, it's exciting.
Test, test. All right, we're back. 341 left on the clock for halftime. Fans, be sure to sign up for eScores online at goargos.com. With eScores, you can receive final score alerts of all UWF athletic events sent directly to your cell phone through text message or to your in, uh, email inbox. It's the quickest way to learn the final score for all 13 Argo teams if you can't be at the game. To sign up, click on eScores in the Game Central portal and follow the directions. All right, three minutes to go until we start the second half. Looking at Mississippi College. Five turnovers, by the way. Joined by Tyler. This half, Tyler... Uh, Paceris. Say it again. Paceris. Paceris. Tyler Paceris. He's going to be doing some color commentating. Jumping in every once in a while. Only five turnovers compared to 12 for West Florida. Could tell a big story there in the first half. Again, score 34-33 in favor of the Division III Choctaws. As a team, Choctaw shooting 47%. West Florida's climbed back up to 44 after a really rough first five, six minutes of the game where UWF just couldn't throw it in the ocean. I don't know what happened. I mean, they got off to a bad start, it seemed like Missed a couple of shots. And then it just turned into pretty much a running gun game from there. It certainly was for the Choctaws as uh, a lot of their points came in transition. Uh, we do have a stat. Mississippi College has 10 fast break points. UWF, zero. Makes sense. Yeah, it does. I mean, thinking back, uh, off turnovers, Mississippi College has 10, UWF has only four. We had seven score ties in the first half. We had six lead changes. Doing the scoring for Mississippi College, two players in double figures, Brandon Blake and Laquavius Cotton, both perimeter players doing a lot of penetrating, scoring a lot of those buckets on transition. Uh, with four, had two players. Jarvis Moore had four points and Adam Smith. Those were their members of their starting lineup. Only ten rebounds for Mississippi College. Kind of weird to look at the rebound totals. UWF had 27. It's hard to believe that's that. 27 to 10 on the rebounds. Argos still find themselves down. We had a couple of times where we missed a bunch of shots in a row and uh, probably like five or six off the rebounds, I'm going to guess. You, you just don't normally see, you yeah. know, where where the where the field goal percentage is, is relatively even. Argonauts 15 for 34. Mississippi College 15 for 32. You look at the rebounds, 27 to 10, and Argos are still down by one. That That is pretty... Pretty weird. Bizarre. Yes. We'll just call it bizarre. For the Ar for the Argonauts, Argos are led by Ellis Young, already in double digits in the first half coming off the bench. He had 13 points, played 16 minutes, so he came in and played almost the entire way. Tracy Williams had uh, played 18 minutes and had five points. He was one for seven from the field. Excuse me, he had three points, five rebounds. Three points in 18 minutes. Again, Argos with 12 turnovers. Game plan, second half. I would assume, Tyler, that that Argos going to have to cut down on turnovers and put a little more pressure defense on, on the Choctaws. Definitely got to get back on D. That's the biggest thing for us. I Definitely. Think. And, and I don't even know if it's getting back on D. It's like we get back and then they score on us anyways. So I mean, it's just that, like that secondary defense, you know, where you get back and you look and you turn around and all of a sudden, bam. Lost in translation. Yep. All right, so we've started. We're about 20 seconds in. Choctaw's knocked down about a 15-footer and go up by three. Argo's starting, same starters as, as, the, uh, as, as we uh, began with. Got Voss, Williams, and 
Little move by Voss. Nice little up and in. Up and under move by Voss. Boy, it's like big man move down there. By a little man, though. <laughs> little fast man for sure. Definitely. Voss is, uh, has known to go in there and get a rebound or two. You know, he doesn't shy away from those big guys. Nice drive by Jarvis Moore on Voss. Going to have to stop those plays. 38-35 now. Johnson gets a good look down low. Double teamed. Back out to Canole. Ball finds itself swung around the perimeter again. Cutter. Williams inside. He goes up for an easy two. Moore goes for the steal. Williams alertly handles the ball. I think Moore might have had a tip on that ball, huh? Not quite sure. It looked like it, though. Yeah, it was on the other side of the court. 38-37. Argos close it to one again. Inside, Victor McLenn in starting the second half for the, Ar uh, for the excuse me, Choctaws. Looked like the starting big man, uh, who was that? Adam Smith. He went out kind of late in the second half over on the side and was looking like he was in pain. They may have started McLenn because of that. We're going to see Ellis Young coming back in. Only a minute 46 into the uh, second half. Latch is going to pop back out. Have to see where those positions change up. Choctaws have it. 31 on the shot clock. No good on the penetration by the Choctaws. Passes back out. Fake three-point shot. Williams is there to cover. Ellis Young doing a good job fronting. McLenn comes away with it. Great move by McLenn. McLenn's got some moves down there, but can't get it around Young as he swats it away. Argos come down with it. Little dish inside to Young. It's good. Assist by Williams. There's a lead back for the Argonauts. Choctaws will throw it away in transition. That's what we've been looking for. Canole on the steal. Nothing there, and Williams tries to force it I'm between two Choctaw players. And Laquavius Cotton gets a pretty easy bucket in transition down there. That come as a that'd be a fast break point and a points off turnovers, huh? Yep. Just what we didn't want to see in the second half. Good Little, transition D and then bad transition D back to back. Yeah, you're. That's a good point. I don't even know if they gave us time for a transition D. Here comes another transition by the Choctaws. They'll drive it in. They're going to get more on the charge. Williams draws, correct me if I'm wrong, his second, draws his second charge? I think so. Nice. <laughs> Looked pretty good transition, transition defense on that yeah, one. Yeah, it wasn't bad. You know, sometimes they won't call a, a charge inside that little half circle under the basket. Williams was pretty darn close to that inside circle. Definitely. Might have been inside. Not he might have been. We'll take it, though. Canole fakes the pull up, goes inside to Young. Young on the spin move, can't keep his feet under him. Jumbled around a little bit. Williams comes away with it, pushes it inside, and scores. Alert move by Williams. He was stuck way down to the baseline, dribbled a few times, backs his defender in and scores. Nice post move by Williams. What do you think of that? Looking good. Had a not-so-good first half. Trying to make up for it, I think. It's pretty good so far in the second half. 41-40 now in favor of the Argonauts. A drive by Cotton, nice defense by Canole, but it was an even better shot by Cotton. He pulls up, it, it was like a floater fading out of bounds. Just hangs in there. High off the backboard. Cotton is pretty much all over the floor. Gotta like his intensity out there. Plays at 110% coach. He does. Little steal inside, you want some of that T to the post move. Nice transition bucket again, off a turnover. That's got to be 20 turnovers for us right there. It's closing in on it. Canole was there, but it was a good move by, by the Choctaws to get that one in. 44-41 now in favor of the Choctaws after a, a little bit of time spent in the lead for the Argonauts. Cross course pass to the block by Voss. Pretty alert play. Scary, but alert. It was a pretty good pass, I think. Ellis was, uh, Mr. Young was there for it. He kind of snuck back backed off of the block on the weak side and they got him way down to the baseline. Young couldn't put it in but 
was that the Argonauts that came away with it? Yes, they did. Argonauts it, it got a reset on the shot clock, so I would think that that was a shot and a rebound, and Argonauts will have it down low, right? I would guess so. All right, so at the 16-minute media timeout, first of four of the half, more festivities on the court. It's a pizza box shootout. So what do you think of the second half, Tyler? We're looking a lot better offensively. I think we're getting better shots this half. Still not playing good transition defense, which was our biggest problem last half. Some of these turnovers are coming on the perimeter, though, and, and it, it's hard to get back in, in transition defense when our turnovers are sort of so far out in the front court. Yeah, we're not putting the ball back inside. Play a little in and out game like we were at the end of the first half. It did seem, you know, it seemed like we had some momentum going with that penetration, and, and we haven't been able to put that back into play. I think it was the lineup we also had. We had a big lineup at the end of the half, it seemed like. Did have a big lineup. Stepping back on the floor for the Argonauts. Same as we left off, it's going to be Voss, Williams, and Johnson. I got to assume they're going to put Canole and Young at the four and five position. Though, I, boy, I like Johnson down there on the post. Hey, an alley-oop to Young. It's good. Argos have tried to do that several times, Tyler, over the course of the last few games. It seems to keep just getting away from us. It's there, though, and we uh, capitalize on that when Young scores again. Yep. All right, Choctaws have it. Still up by one, 44-43 with 15-16 to play. Voss with good defense in there. Won't let the Choctaws penetrate. Choctaws have to set it back up. They got kind of flustered after the good defense. 10 on the shot clock. We better hurry up. Yep, under 10 now on the shot clock. Cotton has it outside. He's looking to penetrate. Young won't have any of it. Good defense by the Argos, but a good pull-up jumper from 15 for the Choctaws. You still got to like that defensive set for the, for the Argonauts. Great defensive set that time. I like it. Yeah, I think they got after it. I th I, Argos have been allowing too many... Easy Penetration bucket. straight to the basket. Johnson with the pull up from about 15. It's no good. Cotton comes away with the rebound for the Choctaws. They'll push it back down again. Looks like Williams had a chance for the steal. Hey, and another steal by Argonauts. That was Voss. Bad pass. Pull up by Williams. Got numbers under the basket. Voss will hustle for the offensive rebound. It's tipped away. It goes out of bounds. Oh, they'll get la Voss as the last one that touched it. Voss does not agree. I'm not sure I can make that call. I. It looked like to go off his leg, but at the same time, it looked like it was <laughs> off his hand. Well, I guess we'll have to side with the rest because that's the way we're going. 50-50 call. Yeah, 46-43 now. Choctaw still with the lead. Williams guarding, uh, excuse me, Duncan at the top of the key. Hey, a good steal by Canole. He's in a breakaway, one on none. He'll do a little light jam. Probably a smart play. 46-45 now. Take the points. We'll take them. Oh, terrible pass by the by the Choctaws. Good pressure defense by Williams. Should give him that steal if he didn't come up with it. I know they won't give it to him, but it was because of his defense. His defense forced that steal out at the front. Lost pushing the ball up the court. I think that's what they want to see out of their guards. Two quick guards and Tracy and, and Sean Voss. You're right. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be unhappy to see that, but I, I'm still a little fearful because, because the Choctaws have been able to get, you know, that penetration in the basket so often in this game. So uh, I'm torn between the two. Another Voss, Voss looks at, at uh, Johnson on the inside. Johnson can't put away a little eight-footer. Tipped around a few times. Choctaws come away with it. Cotton for three. It's good. Cotton is just all over the court, it seems like. It does seem that way. I'll be ready for him to come out. <laughs> I think Stenny would like that, too. Yeah, I'm sure. Nice pass. Nice pass by Canole. Sneaky little offensive set for the Argos. They run all the time. They try to hit that cutter coming around the foul line to the tee. They like to try to get it to him in a quick pass. Weak block or a little dump over the top on the inside on the on the strong side block. Worked out that time. Yes, a few turnovers in the first half. I think sometimes the defense anticipates that play and we go to it maybe too much. If we keep getting looks like that though, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take that too. Young on the three-point play, 49-48, still Choctaw lead, 13-10 to go in the first half. 
Another attempt by Canole. Good try on the steal. Boy, Kavos had a good play to try to recover on the steal, and he'll get called for the foul. You still got to like that hustle out there, though. Peter Canole just hustling like he usually does. Good defensive player. Nice and long. I think that's what helps him out a lot. Yeah, we do find Canole um, guarding those perimeter players. It, you'd almost think it was a matchup issue. Cotton down low in the post, tipped away. Back to the Choctaws. Spin move, inside, tough shot. Gets the foul call. Lynn Griffin bails him out of a tough situation. Griffin charged with his, I believe that's his second personal foul. That's going to be the third team foul in the Argonauts right now. It's going to put Blake on the line from Mississippi College to two, two shots. He'll Blake, hit the first one. Blake has a couple good shots. I think he's that. He's had that late, fade away like left-handed shot go down a couple of he times. He shoots good on the move, doesn't he? Yes, he does. Yeah. This is one stiff-legged free throw. Not something you usually see. No he's bend in the knees. Not a bend in sight. Back in the game, Parker Moore for the Choctaws. He'll replace Blake after he hit both free throws. Choctaw's up by three, 51-48 with 12.40 to go. Second half. Williams on the far side, looking inside. He finds Young down low on the post. Young does a great job backing in. Cotton. Strong move by Young. Cotton cannot play when he gets backed inside. Could be something we look to capitalize on. Young offensively has just been outstanding. He has think. been amazing tonight. Hey, nice job by Griffin to force a travel. That's Adam Smith back in now for the Choctaws. Haven't seen him much lately. Great defense by Griffin. I think the turnover ratio is getting about the same again it's now. It's closing in. Voss on the near side. Haven't seen Latch again. Voss had a lot of minutes this half. Looking to get him in on the defensive action. Nice, nice block by the Choctaws on Young. Something we haven't seen very much of tonight. Them being able to handle Young on the, uh, when Young's down on the post. Cotton for two. It's no good. Gets his own rebound. He puts it back up and under again and scores. Stinnett not happy over there on the sideline. Hey, Voss on the transition from Williams. Good cross-court bounce pass from Williams. Dangerous, though. Exactly, I think, what I wanted to see. Our, our point guard just pushing the ball up the court. we got to play a little bit better defense, I think. Can't let Cotton get all over the floor like that. Steal by Williams, tipped away. Griffin gets it back to Williams. Williams goes down easy, unmolested two-pointer. Argonauts now up. 54, 53 with 11.15 to go in the second half. Double team. Tipped away, double team, yep, pressure defense. Little half-court trap hip out here by the Argonauts. I like this aggression. Picking up the defense on where he left off at the end of the uh, first half. It does seem that way. I, I, I like this. I wasn't sure whether I'd like it or not, but uh, but the um, Choctaws don't seem to be as aggressive toward the basket this half. Not real sure if it's the Argo defense or not, but you know it's possible Stinnett realized that, hey, they're not pushing the ball as much. Let's go out and stick them at half court. We surprised them. Got a, a little uh, double team steal right here over the half court line. We'll go back the other way. Chance to increase the Argonaut lead. Another turnover. That's what I'm liking to see. Our Argo defense is definitely stepping it up. I, I definitely say that. I don't know. We still got to slow down that transition, though. That's one thing that we, it just doesn't seem like we've done this half or first half at all. We haven't seen Lawrence Certain yet come in off the bench or uh, Savon Bracey. Yeah, Savon Bracey. That was that big lineup that we had in the middle of the half that looked really good, I thought. Yeah, uh, Certain came in. Seemed like he had a bunch of rebounds. He had two rebounds, played seven minutes. Gracie came in and gave six minutes. We have seen Griffin, however, and he's in right now. He gave us eight minutes in the first half. Kind of surprising. Latch has only, only saw eight minutes in the first half. Has he come back in since he went out at about the minute and a half mark? I think he played like a minute and a half, got blown by on defense, and then it just said, I, we're going to go with Ellis Young. Well, Ellis Young has been strong, switched around the offensive set. 
It's looking good for UWF right now. Choctaw's still playing pretty well, though. Got to give him credit. Oh, nice pass. Down low again. It's starting to really open up for the Argonauts down low. Ellis Young gets an easy little dump. Good Ellis Young with 24 points this game. That would probably be 26 right there, huh? We just got the stats in. Or did you add those in? I just added those okay, in. Okay, so he's got 24. Almost another steal by the Argonauts again. Tipped away. Cotton on the boy. Boy, Linwood Griffin called on the foul. I got to tell you, I think Griffin had him sealed off. And he bailed him out. Again, that's twice in a row, I feel like. Yeah, Searcy drives the baseline. Griffin bodied him out of the way, had him going out of bounds. Cotton had to do a little funky shot. And Griffin came down and fouled him. Got to keep your hands up. Cannot bring them down. Well, especially after you, you know, you pushed him out of bounds with the body. Great defense. Missed first shot by Cotton. I think that's the one bad thing Cotton's done all game. Not make a free throws. I know. Mississippi College has not missed many free throws this game. They were five for five uh, up until this point. Not many free throws all the way around. Argo's only two or three on the night. Kind of strange. There's a lot of been a lot of post play, especially in the second half for the Argonauts. We've only been in the line maybe like once in the second half. I think the refs lot, are just a lot of penetration play. on the uh, by the Choctaws. Kind of a four shot, four shot by Young. Not a bad shot though. Not a bad shot, especially for him though the way he's playing tonight. Got to let him do his thing down there. Had a lot of rebounders. Argos will come up with a team rebound. Tracy Williams. We'll throw it in down low. Canole pulls up from 17, fakes the shot, goes into, was that Griffin? I think so. Canole is wide open, though. You need to take those kind of shots, I believe. Well, for sure, Canole. It wasn't a bad pass, though. There's a little alley-oop into Williams, of all people. Inside to the middle. Canole goes back out to Canole, and he throws it away on the inside, trying to get it to Young. Transition bucket goes down to... Cameron Bounds, not sure we've seen him very much. Played two minutes in the first half. Now in for the second time, I would think. Canola at the wing again. That's why that versatility that he brings to the offense. He does bring versatility to the offense. Cross court pass to Canola from 16 feet. Good. He's almost money from 16 in, it seems like. He certainly got the shot for it. Boy, good thing Canole was down there. That was a two-on-one. They go, looks like Argos were kind of lazy getting back. Canole was back there and had a two-on-one. What they call it cross-court baseline to the weak side baseline side. And Canole was the only one there. And Canole tipped it away or it had been another easy bucket. Story of the night for us. Wow, that was so weird. Shock dolls have it. 20 seconds left on the shot clock. Pull up from 16, 17 feet. It's good. It looks like one of the, it looks like Ellis or someone got lost on one side of the block. There was two guys guarding one guy. Tough shot though. I mean, that, yeah. uh, that was who was that? That was Raglan that pulled up from about 17, 18 feet just beyond the three-point line. Pretty well contested. Back into Young again. He backs in. Nice move. Up and under. Little reversal. Nice left hand from, from Ellis Young. It's been pretty easy downstairs for Ellis Young. It's been pretty easy downstairs for the Argonauts. It just doesn't seem like we're going down there that much. Well, we certainly are here lately. I think we've identified that that's a weak spot for the Choctaws. What a nice move by the Choctaws. I'd like to see that in slow motion. They get Edward Griffin on a, a uh, goaltending. Looked like a LeBron James pin almost. It sure did. He came through and from behind swatted it away. Refs will say it came off of the backboard first. Bring instant replay to college. Amen. Johnson on the far side. Williams has it at the top of the key. Voss still in. A lot of minutes from Voss. Second half. Still looking for something inside. You got Griffin and Young looking on the post. Moving around. Shot from Voss. There's a rebound by Voss. He'll go up and he gets tackled from underneath by Brandon Blake. It looked like it looked like um, Sean Voss. Sorry, I forgot his name off the top of my head. Sean Voss almost had that one. That looks like his shot. I think wide open three pointer. 
Well, you, you know, you, you got to let Voss take the three. It hasn't been very successful, but if he doesn't take the three, they're not going to come out and play him. And, and Voss needs people to come out and play on him so he can get the penetration around him, you know. That's definitely a strong point in this game, his yeah. penetration. There is a pin by Young. Moore tried to come in, and it just like, like Moore was on, I mean, uh, Young was on springs. Nice little dish by Williams to the weak side block at Johnson. He puts it in for another easy bucket. Terrence Williams with a nice pass. Yeah, when we, when we force it inside, either dump it in or penetrate in, things are happening for the Argonauts. It's almost like night and day from inside out. Good little dump inside for Cameron Bounds. He'll get, he'll get blocked but fouled by Ellis Young. That's going to be our eight-minute media timeout. 7.33 to go in the game. 62-59 in flavor of the Argonauts. Penair Federal Credit Union was chartered in 1936 to serve civil service and military employees and their immediate families assigned to our military bases in the area. Today they serve many other employee groups and invite you and your family to inquire about membership. Thank you, Penair Federal Credit Union, for your support of Argonaut Athletics. Well, Tyler, we're up by three. 7.33 to go, five fouls each team. What do you think is going to do it for the Argonauts? Defense, defense, defense. I think that's our biggest key. We got to lock down on defense, get back in transition. I think that'll win us our game. I, I, I would be worried if we started turning the ball over too. Oh, that, that would not be good for us. I think we need to play to our strong points on offense, get the ball down low, play in and out game. I think that's what's been working for us the second half. Yeah, the perimeter perimeter play other than Canole, specifically in the second half, is has just not been there. We really haven't gone to it. Have we shot a three-pointer in the second half? Other than Sean Voss's miss. Yeah, that's, that's right. all I think I remember from, to, uh, from yeah. the second half. The game plan specifically for uh, taking on Mississippi College in the second half has been very strong. Yes. I think the Choctaws are playing well, possibly beyond what they're capable of, even though we don't know. Nice play. Boy, I tell you, Brandon Blake's a good player. Yes, he is. He's got, it looks like he has it all other than the three-point shot. Yep. He'll take a, it to the rack and everything. He's a junior from Oxford, Mississippi. 62-61 now. Argo's still holding a slim lead. There's Johnson on the nice pass by Canole. He cannot get it to fall. Not sure if that was blocked or not. Not quite sure. Left hand, maybe it made it, maybe it, made it a little bit tougher than what it seems like. Yeah, that's a good point. He came from uh, down the lane. Canole alert look inside. Canole gets it from the baseline inbounds play. Goes to Johnson on the far side. Looking for Voss coming through. There's Williams at the top of the key. Williams penetration, blocked shot. Not sure if it's a uh, block shot or a steal before he shot it. Cotton for two, no good. Williams gets the rebound. Not sloppy transition defense, but not the best we've seen all night. Could have been better, definitely. Wise, wise move by Johnson to bring it back out. I like that play. We don't do that enough, I don't think. Sometimes I think we try to, to force it. We tried some uh, to score off of the secondary. It just wasn't there. There's Canole. Canole pulls up so well off, yeah. off of that off that play, off that dribble. He has such a beautiful shot. Actually, he wasn't off the dribble. That was off of his pass and shoot. Love that play. Canole does it so well. We're definitely going to miss him. Let's enjoy him while we've got him. Though. Long year left. Argonauts looking to go 3-0. and Up now 64-61. Missed three-point play. Shot, I mean. Not sure what happened there on the rebound. They got somebody with the push. It's going to be number one, Tracy Williams. Got to get, got to box out on that one. Looked like only, a push in the back. His first. Yeah, it was a battle between big men down there. Not sure what Tracy Williams is doing down there. Got him with the push on the back, though. Inbounds play underneath for Choctaw. Good defense by Canole to hold off. It's kind of a funny look for Canole guarding the shortest man on the floor, uh, Jarvis, Jarvis Moore. Jarvis Moore at 5'7". 
Peter Canola at 6'7". Six, seven. <laughs> but did a good job with him. Choctaws hit a three-pointer. Tie the score at 64. 5.30 to play, getting down to crunch time. Inside to, to, Young, uh, to Johnson. Back inside, kind of a force in there. Jump we, off. we do a lot of that little dish off. We go to the block and that sneaky little pass underneath. Those are so scary to me. If it works, it looks nice. If it doesn't, it's it's not nice yeah, <laughs> at all. It, you know, it's just, and I'm, I think sometimes we telegraph the pass, like we turn and look and then flip it to him and it like gives it away. I don't know, Nate Johnson's pretty strong. I think he needs to just post his man up from there. See, yeah, I agree with you. I think from that position, he could have back, backed those guys in. The man who's guarding him now looks about two inches, but I'd take Nate Johnson with his strength. Uh, I, I'm, I'm looking for Ellis Young. There he is. Back him in. Little hook shot. In. Ellis Young has been our go-to guy all night, it seems like. All night. He's closing in on 30 points for the night, averaging 15.5 uh, on the year. Nice little pull-up from Jarvis Moore. He was being guarded that time by uh, Voss. Voss trying to protect the lane. Moore pulls up from 15, knocks it down, tied at 66. Under five to go. Choctaws in a man-to-man -man defense. Find Williams. He'll go down low to Johnson. Pull up from the corner. He's going to get fouled. Let's see if they're going to give him three down there. Two. Two shots. How do you like that shot down there? It was very congested. I mean, I personally know I would like for him to break, back it out. I think there was like 15 seconds left on the shot clock. Run another play. How has he been from the free throw line tonight? I think he's one for two. Williams puts the first one in. Williams on the year, 11 for 14, almost 80%. Williams on the night, that's his first one of the night. And he hits the second one, so increasing his free throw percentage up above 80 now. Still early in the year, but great free throw percentage. I agree with you, I'd like to see Williams take it to the hole a little more. Oh yeah, he's definitely a strong, strong guard. He's Just a good, like Sean. Good three point shooter, I mean he played at Indian River Community College two years, Clayton State. Shot really well from three point line, almost 40% all three of those years. Hadn't been that effective in the first three games, though, from that from that area. Takes some time to get used to sometimes. The Oops. backdrop might be a little different. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Pull up for three in Canole's face. That's going to hit the wire. Boy, boy, a lot of Clayton's, uh, excuse me, Shotgall's shots are hitting that wire up there, bouncing high off the back of the rim. I mean, we'll take it every time. I I'll it. take it, team rebounds. Good defense by Canole. It almost looks like the Choctaws are just kind of spreading out and trying to go one-on-one -on -one now. Same thing from first half. Yeah, right there at the end of the first half where they changed it. God, come on, Johnson. You got to take that shot. Johnson looks around, can't find anything. Looks like he has an open lane. Dribbles a couple of times and then stops. Almost turns the ball over. Needs to be a little bit more aggressive, I think. I think he can do it. I think that should have been two points for Johnson. Well, we're up by two. We could have taken the four-point lead, definitely. 3.51 to go in the, first, in the second half of the game, really. 68-66 in favor of the Argos. They have the ball. It's a media timeout. Law firm Mike, uh, McDonald, Fleming, and Moorhead is a proud corporate sponsor of UWF Athletics and is located on the corner of Government and Balin Street in downtown Pensacola, conveniently across the street from the Escambia County Courthouse. Thank you, McDonald Fleming Moorhead. Stats with 3.51 to go in the game. Scoring for the Argonauts, 28 points for Ellis Young. 13 for 17 from the field. Shooting lights out. Lights out, you gotta go to him, Tyler. Gotta go to him. Williams with 11 points, now four for 11 from the field. And Peter Canole with 10. Peter Canole from that mid-range game, I think he's gone five for five, I feel like. This half specifically. Uh, Canole coming off a rough night, he scored two points. Last game, double digits tonight. Go to Canole in the corner, out of the timeout. It's Argonaut ball, Boss has it at the top of the key. 
Play some great defense. Let's get us a win out of here. You can tell the Choctaw's game plan is to front Ellis Young. Pull up from Williams. Young with a rebound and puts it back in. It was an air ball by Williams. Looked to be a little bit of a force. It looked like it might have been blocked. It might have been. But you can't really front an air ball. So Ellis Young in the right place at the right time gets his 30th point. I like those trash points. He'll take him any night. Oh, yeah. Young also with six rebounds now. Be nice to get it Young up there at a triple-double. I guess it would be really nice just to get a win out of this thing. Tough this, game. Yes, it has. Choctaw's playing some good defense. So, with that, so is uh, the Argonauts. But back and forth all night. I wonder how many lead changes. It's been a lot. And ties. Canole tipped it out of bounds. Good defensive night for Canole. A lot of time forced to guard. Their smallest perimeter players like right now. Same thing. He's given up a foot. Nice defense. Forces Moore to pass it back out to, to Cotton. And he knocks down the long range, too, from the corner. I think he doesn't need to help on that one. It, it, does, it did seem like in the corner somebody came over to help Canole. And Canole had it all figured out. So the help side defense comes in unnecessarily. They go to the... Go to the um, the baseline. Cotton knocks one in, uh, knocks one in for the corner. Canole has a foot difference. Help defense on on that didn't seem that necessary to me at least. Cotton has 24 on the night. Uh, matched almost by Termont Ragland. He's got 20. So the Choctaw duo going for 44 points out of their 68. Accounting for about two-thirds of the offense, two guys. With Ellis Young accounting for three-sevenths of our offense, I think we can safely say that's helping our team out a lot. Brandon, <laughs> Brandon Blake shoot nine for 11. That is, that is outstanding, I feel like. From the Choctaws, yeah. And look at Laquavius Cotton. He's now 9 of 12. Not bad shooting from them. What do you think? Why do you think that is? Why, why are these guys having so much success? It looks like they're getting a lot of stuff off the dribble, and I don't, it might be the person who's guarding them. Brandon Blake has that nice little fadeaway left-handed shot, it seems like, and it's almost unstoppable. He jumps so high in the air. Cotton's three for four from the three-point line. So you think they'll be going to Raglan and Cotton here in the last 2.53? I mean, if they need a bucket, I'm going to Cotton. Got to like it. Cotton seems like he's done a lot. Getting on the boards, too. Choctaw is picking up in a full court defense. See what they drop back into. Great job by the Argonauts breaking that defense. They'll drop back into the man. Voss on the far side. Johnson at the top of the key. Williams on this side. Down low are Canole and Young. Williams tries to penetrate. Nothing there. Wisely comes back out. They go to, to Johnson at the top of the key. He looks and nothing's there. A lot, of, a lot of times the convergence down low. Hey, nice little pass by Johnson down low. And he goes to Young. Young's going to go to the line to shoot two shots. That's the one time I think I want Nate Johnson to pass that ball. There was someone right on him. And, and Ellis Young was Yeah, wide. but, you know, it's down there. Down there at the basket is a quick look and pass. I think Johnson gets into some, some problems when he gets it, turns, and everything stops. You know, it's like he's looking. He's got he's to look at all four guys. And I'm sure that's part of the play, but, you know, he's going to have to do something, either move the ball around, hold the ball tighter, or pass it quicker because what's going on when, when Johnson specifically gets it at the top of the key, they've figured him out, and they're just tipping it away. Breakdown in defense by the Argonauts. And Young comes down and fouls him. Young says no good, but uh, I agree with it. Young did come down on him a little bit, and Chalk calls are going to get a chance at the three-point play. Once again, that's Young's man just lackadaisically running back on defense after his made free throw. After his made three throws, yep. McLinn wisely getting down there. He was way ahead of the ball game down there. Nice forward pass, though. That's what I think. It, I think that's what surprised a lot of our players. Very alert by the Choctaws. So McLinn's free throw up and no good, but tipped in by the Choctaws. That was Williams that missed that box out. Raglan came from the top of the key. I don't know what happened there. Somebody missed it. It was either Canole or, or Williams. Maybe it was Canole that missed it down there. 
Johnson, two guys on one side. Johnson penetrates from the left and goes up, faking in. Back two-point lead for the Argonauts. Scary there for a second. Lost our lead. Got it back there, thanks to Nate Johnson. Cotton posting up on the inside. Good job by Johnson. Oh, man, I didn't see that. It looked like a foul, but Ellis Young coming around just bailing him out. Get the foul on Voss. Voss is not very happy with that call. Voss bailed him out. Looked like Ellis Young to me. Uh, McLinn is going to go to the line. 142 to play. Argos up by two points. 72. Excuse me. 74. 72. McLinn hits the first of two for the Argonauts. Both teams in the bonus. Inside two minutes. Both teams in the bonus. Sean Voss. Johnson. Williams. Canole. And Young, who gets the rebound, tries to give it back. UWF across center court. They'll set it up. Normal offensive set. Cutter. No cutters there. Go to Canole. He pops back out. That ball's tipped away. Nothing was really there. I, I really don't like it if it's not there. Try to get to their go-to guy. My goodness. It's kind of a one-on-one -on -one sealed off situation with a spread down there. Canole goes for the steal. Dangerous play on that. In this type of game, you can't go over and steal it. Just got to play great defense. Yeah, I would agree. Back up to a one-point lead. Williams gives it back to him. Oh, my goodness. Raglan off the missed free throw. Argos will get it back. Still down one, though. 46 seconds to go. Crunch time right here. Get the ball to Ellis Young. That's what they I did. don't like Ellis Young out there on the perimeter. Boy, it's some confusion there. Good smart play by Nate Johnson. They're calling the timeout when he's in the middle, when he's stuck in traffic like that. I agree. He was stuck. We had more turnovers inside the paint tonight than I've seen in a long time. And that's been our strong point for tonight, too, going to the paint. Well, part of the, part of the offensive set is that we get the ball inside and then we look down low. They like to get the ball on that little curl coming around from the weak side to the to the uh, free throw line and around the top tee, trying to get the ball there, either penetrate or stop and look down low, either weak side or the strong side. And it seems like right there, we've got some good buckets, but we've had a lot of turnovers right there. I think people are trying to make the spectacular play. They just need to go up for the layup, maybe get a foul call to the line or something like that. Or maybe we don't go in there when it's all congested like that. Or maybe in and out, do some quick in and out play. You know, to make the defense fair, because they know when it's coming in, you know, if they know it might go right back out, they'll be much less likely to double down on that person over there at the tee or the foul line. That's where Jason Latch and Sean Voss come in, helping that in and out game. Sean will get the ball and pump fake and go right back to the rim sometimes. Yeah, we, we certainly haven't set a tone for shooting from the perimeter tonight. So I would say the Choctaws are much more likely to double down and to converge in the middle because it's just not going back out. And when it goes back out, either we don't shoot it or, or we're just not going to make it. At tonight, that is. Tonight, at least. All right, Argonauts find themselves down by one. 17 on the shot clock, 34 on the game clock. With the ball, inbounds play down low, goes to Johnson, to Young from about 18 feet. Williams penetrates. He tries to pull up. On a player, it's stripped away. Williams luckily comes back down with it. Williams penetrates. There's a play, and it's good. Argos will get a timeout. That's what I've been looking for, Tyler. I want him to go to the basket. Tracy Williams making a nice, strong move baseline and finishing at the rim, putting us up by one. I like it. Choctaws are stunned. They thought they had a steal over there on Williams. Williams tries to go over there. He gets on the baseline. Well guarded, he tries to sneak in a pull up from about 17 feet. It's stripped away, bounce and goes straight up in the air. Williams comes down with it. He makes a nice, nice behind the back move and just takes it baseline. I don't think his defender was expecting him to take it. He hasn't been taking it all night, it seemed like. Well, but I like it when he takes the ball. I like it when any of us take the ball. Oh, yeah. 
Both of our guards are really strong, really athletic, it seems like. So, I mean, I would love for them to take it to the rack almost every time. But I, mean, I agree. You know, and I know, I know our offense is set up, you know, to, to play down low. And, 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 you know, I keep saying I like it when they, when they throw it in. You know, it, it's obviously an offense that's set to go inside. Oh, yes, but definitely. It, it'd, like, it'd be nice to see them run some, uh, some different sets off of the same line to maybe confuse the defense, you know, a little and, bit. and try to get some of that penetration in. It's just, I mean, we can't get any shots freed up from we, the perimeter. In the first half, in the first couple minutes, we had it going well. Jason was getting a couple of good shots from the corner. He, he did get some good shots. Just wouldn't fall down for us. I think that's when we started to, you know what, we're just going to bang it down low and hopefully you get the best out of it. And I think it's worked out pretty well tonight, I think. All right, 19.1 seconds to go. I think they're going to save it for the last second shot. My guess is they'll go up for it with about six or seven seconds left. Look for a rebound if they miss. Definitely. Just make sure we play good defense. No fouls here. That's what our biggest thing is. Argo's picking up in a full court man. Going to put some pressure on the inbound pass. You like this? Yes, I think so. If, had, if someone gets beat, everyone's got to get back, though. Yeah. All right. Just a little pressure show on the inbound pass. 13 seconds to go now. Boss guarding the ball. Penetration. They're going to call. He stepped on the baseline. Good strong move by Blake. We knew it was going to go to Blake or Cotton. Exactly. Had a good look at it, but it was good defense by, who was that over there, Williams guarded Tracy him? Tracy Williams, yep. Williams guarded him, kind of forced him to take an extra step, and he stepped off a big plant on the baseline to push himself and propel himself out from under the, out from under the basket. He stepped out of bounds. At first, I thought it was a foul call, and that's the first thing we said we don't want to see. Yeah, I knew it. Yeah, I was wondering if it was going to be a foul. And the issue was whether it was going to be a foul on the shot because it could have been a continuation. Definitely. It looked like it would have been, in my opinion, a continuation. Thankfully, though, he stepped out of bounds. 6.5 seconds to go. Argos leading by one. 76-75. Pretty high-scoring game. Definitely. It was really low-scoring in the first half, too. Argos averaging 84 on the year, had a big point outing in their first game, scored over 100. Who do you think the ball is going to go to in this in the, uh, the inbound play? Uh, I think you got to give it to uh, get it to Williams. I mean, he's shooting lights out over 80 percent now. From the free throw line, yep. that's for sure. Yeah, averaging over 80 percent. Uh, had a good free throw shooting game last time out. Other than that, Nate Johnson's 11 for 12. That's, I mean, let's try to get it to him then, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Not too bad. 92% on the, on the year. Yeah, Johnson hadn't shot a free throw tonight. On the line, very few free throws for the Argonauts. Four of five, last stat count I got. All right, so Chuck Tall's, of course, picking up. Full court. Voss is going to throw it in. They're going to look for Williams. Williams, it's not there. Voss is going to call a timeout. Good move by Voss. You can tell they were looking for Williams. Yes. What was confusing to me, they sent Nate all the way down the court. I mean, he's shooting 92%. Maybe Stenton doesn't realize that. You never know. I think I think the, the uh, I, it could be possible that they have more confidence in Williams with the ball. So if Williams gets the ball, you know, as opposed to just getting fouled, maybe they're a little more concerned about Johnson holding it and protecting it than they are about Williams. Possession arrow is on Choctaw, so. Possession arrow to Choctaw. Let's see what they draw up here. Let's try to get the ball to Tracy. Tracy Williams. All right, Boss will throw it in again. It's gonna go to Peter Canole. Back to Boss, but they'll get Canole with the, on the foul. Nice little cut move to get open by Peter Canole. Canole on the year, over two. Oh. Not very many free throws shot. Kind of weird that Canole wouldn't have shot a free throw. He plays down low some. He, is, he has uh, been inclined to shoot more from the perimeter. Seems like more of his style. I'd like to see him get down there and shoot some more. Definitely on the block. I'd like to see him shoot some more just in period. In yeah. general. One and one right now. I keep being told um, Canole is a is a great score, but he still seems a little tentative to score and to take that role. You know, I was told 
I was told this year that Canole was going to be a score. And so, you know, so far, I haven't really seen him come out and, and take that role. I think it might be the set sometimes. I think they need to get him some, some nice little motion going, get him around the floor, the court, because I, 17 feet in, it seems like he is lights out almost. Well, he is. He's, got, he's great. And he ain't a bad three-point shooter either. Canole hits the first to two. R goes up now 77-75. 5.2 seconds to go. If Canole can put one in, that'd make it a three-point game and probably at worst, overtime. At worst. At best, a win. Let's just hope he makes it. One for three on the, on the season. All right, for video highlights from the week in Argonaut Athletics, plus interviews with your favorite UWF coaches and student athletes, make sure you check out the Argonaut Weekly, the only online show dedicated to the Argonauts a new edition of Argonaut Weekly is available every Tuesday at GoArgos.com. All right, Ken back at the foul line. Both teams in the one and one situation. Ken knocks it down, two for four on the year now. Here it comes, four, three. It's going to be more with the pull up. It's no good off of the back of the rim. Boy, it looked good from here, Tyler. Yes, it did. Thought we were going to overtime for a second there. Jeez. All right, so the Argonauts are victorious over Division Three Mississippi College. That's Mississippi College's first game of the year. They go over one. Strong show. Do you think they're really that good of a team? They look like they have a couple good studs and and Brandon Blake, and Brandon Blake and like and Cotton. But other than that. Laquavius Cotton, yeah. Seems like a Division three sport to me. Well, I guess they'll find out. We probably won't see him again unless we got him on the road. We'll get some stats here shortly. Finish off the game. Argo fans, next time you're on campus, be sure to stop by the UWF bookstore at the Commons for the latest Argonauts merchandise. Argo t-shirts, hats, accessories, and more. You can find it all at the UWF Bookstore at the Commons. Also, don't forget to visit Scenic Hills Country Club, the jewel of the Emerald Coast for your next round of golf. A three-time Best of the Bay winner. That's Pensacola Finest Links. Scenic Hills is located just off Nine Mile Road, only a drive and a chip away from the UWF campus. For more info, visit scenichills.com. Or book your uh, tea time today at 850-476-0380. All right, Tyler. End of the game stats. For Mississippi College, it was the Laquavius Cotton Brandon Blake show. Scoring 44 points. Cotton with 24. Blake with 20. Cotton. Not much Cotton. else going on. Cotton. Moore had eight. Victor McGlynn had seven. Rebounding, 18 rebounds on the night. Uh, uh, that, that's got to be some kind of record. I, they shot 33 for 58 and only had 18 rebounds. That has got to be some kind of record. 18 <laughs> rebounds on the night. That is just amazing. Uh, interesting stat also for Blake and Cotton. Blake goes 9 for 11 from the field, and Cotton goes 9 for 12. If you put them down at 50%, it wouldn't have been a game. Nope. Uh, Mississippi College shoots on the game 33 for 58 from the field, 57%. Wow. That is some great shooting, by the way. Unbelievable. Thanks to Cotton and Blake, at least. Yeah, I guess so. All right, for the Argonauts, led by Ellis Young, 32 points. What do you think about that? He was our. Definitely our MVP of the game. Pretty MVP much. of the game. We'll go ahead and call it right now. I'd say it. 14 for 18 from the floor. Four for five from the line. He had six rebounds. Also big, Tracy Williams with 13 points. He was five for 13 from the field. One for four from the three-point line. He had eight rebounds. Leading rebounder for the Argonauts. Don't Hustler. See, don't see that from a guard every so often. Not so often. He had 38 minutes. Peter Canole had 12 points. 5 for 11 from the field, 5 rebounds. 
Also, Nate Johnson has six rebounds, four points. And a uh, big play from Sean Voss. Had six points, three for five from the field. 39 rebounds for the Argonauts. I think we shot a great percentage. Uh, we got, I think, also Mississippi College didn't have a lot of rebounds because we had 16 offensive rebounds. Yeah, that helped. 16 to five on the offensive board. 39 to 18 on the boards in favor of the Argonauts. You know, on the game, Argonauts shoot 34 of 62, 55%. Not bad shooting. Surprised? Not really. I think we need to definitely pound pound the glass a little bit more, stop taking so many outside shots. I think that's what kind of threw that percentage off, two for 12. Well, you know, I mean, I'll tend to agree with you, but if we don't create some outside presence, teams are going to figure us out. True. And they're going to really jack us down. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, that team wasn't very big. Not at all. And a team that comes in here with some size in the post, we're going to have trouble. Maybe that was Stinnett's game plan. He knew they didn't have great size. They didn't have a great post presence. So we tried to really force it all night. I think it definitely shows we only shot 12 threes over 62 shots. Definitely try to get it inside. Ellis Young was playing terrific on the inside, I believe. Terrific job for sure. 32 points for Ellis Young. Going 14 for 18 from the field. Four for five from the free throw line. Well, we're going to end up our broadcast tonight. Thank you for listening to today's broadcast of University of West Florida Basketball Live at GoArgos.com. Be sure to join us again. Not even sure when the next game is. You got that for us, Tyler? November 23rd at Albany State. Next men's game is going to be November 23rd, Albany State. believe that's at uh, Thanksgiving Classic. That's going to be broadcast from right here. That's going to come to you at 6 p.m. Central Time. Argos will also play Tuskegee at 6 p.m. on the 24th. So have a little fun during Thanksgiving. Either come out to the game or listen to the broadcast on GoArgos.com. This is Daniel Drost and Tyler Placeres. You have been listening to UWF Basketball on GoArgos.com. Uh, so long, everybody.